Well, welcome to my last discussion on long-term death. Death um, topic is on bonds issued with detachable warrants. Obviously, our goal is going to be to learn to do the accounting for bonds issued with detachable warrants. A bond issued with detachable warrants is an interesting creature. Let me draw a picture of you for you. So you actually have a bond, because bonds exist. This isn't an indenture. This is my actual bond. And on this bond, I am going to have some warrants that you could take off and sell. One, two, three, four, five. This bond has five detachable warrants worth it, in my example. Let's give you some facts for a problem that might involve a bond that has five detachable warrants for it. See how we would do the accounting for it. In our story, let's say we issue a bond at 103%. We're only going to have one bond. You can say we're issuing a million of these if you want a lot of zeros. And each of our bonds that we're issuing has five detachable warrants. And a warrant and 50 bucks can be submitted to us to purchase one share common stock. So the person who owns this bond will have the bond still and they could have as much as five shares of stock if they chose to exercise the warrants. Let's also assume that shortly after the issue those warrants have been detached and are trading separately on the market for four dollars each. Finally, let's assume that the warrants expire in six months from the date of issue. So the warrants, it's fair to say, were attached to the bond to make it a sweeter offer. So our offers are getting sweeter all the time. And the person that buys this bond can buy the bond for at 103, detach the warrant, sell them for four bucks each and get 20 bucks for it right off the bat, or they can keep the warrants and exercise them. It doesn't matter who owns the warrants, anyone can exercise them and tender that along with $50 and acquire a share of our stock. So first, let's make an entry to issue the bond. You've read the material, go ahead and give it a try. Our cash will be thousand and thirty or one thousand dollars times a hundred and three percent our bonds payable will be a thousand because we always put the face value of bonds in bonds now we need to record the equity or the warrant and I'm going to write equity here so you know that this is part of stockholders equity it's a temporary account in there because it does expire we're going to assign to it the value of this that they're trading at. There are five warrants at four dollars each. So we said they were trading at four dollars each. There were five attached to the bond. Five times four is twenty. So that leaves the premium on the bond payable to be whatever it needs to be to make the entry balance. It could also be a discount. That wouldn't be a problem. So upon issue we recognize that we have a debt and that we have potential equity and the warrants would be shown as stockholders equity and they would stay there until they were exercised or expired. In our first example, let's assume that all of the warrants were exercised before they expired. We would get some cash. We have five warrants outstanding. They have to tender $50 with the warrant, so we'll get $250 cash. We also have the equity of the warrants to deal with. And the equity of the warrants is going away, and it's going to turn into stockholders' equity. So we need to take those off the books right now. We said all of them were being exercised, so I'm going to take off all twenty dollars. Now I need to issue the stock. We're going to issue five shares of stock because that's what we said we'd do. The ten dollar par value per share five times ten 
is 50 and that would be paid in capital from common stock. By now you're getting used to that account. Coming in to make a balance, 270 in debits minus 50 in credits means we need to put 220 in paid in capital. That entry assumes the warrants were exercised. Let's make another assumption now. Let's assume that they weren't exercised, that the above entry didn't happen, but that they expired. If they are expired, no cash will change hands, and no stock will be issued, but we do need to deal with the equity warrants account we left from the first entry. So we would say, go to the equity account and grab stock warrants, and zero that account, and put it into a paid-in capital from common stock account. It could be paid-in capital common stock from expired warrants, if we care to keep that account in that much detail, or it could reasonably just be put in the paid-in capital from common stock accounts. Either way, once they've expired, they have no value, so we can't leave them on the book. So it will end with either A or B. This was a simple example of accounting for bonds issued with detachable warrants, keeping the dollar amounts low, making it easy to play with. Thank you so much for joining me, and that wraps up our discussion on long-term debt. Wazoo! Talk to you later.